Hey guys. Okay, so I am live. Um, I am going to be uh, reading one of my stories today. So um, I put a poll in there. I'm checking to make sure the poll worked. So I'm going to be uh, reading one of my stories today. Sorry. Um, let me know if, if you see the poll, because I was supposed to have put a poll. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yes. So there's a poll in the store, in the, in the feed that's going to ask you which, um, which story you want me to read next. So before I go and get too far into this, I'm going to go ahead and explain um, what I'm doing here. Uh, this is not an unboxing live stream. This stream is for me to uh, read some of the stories that I wrote. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry, I got a new table to set this on and it's kind of wiggly, so not the best stable, stable table. Huh? Um, okay, so a few weeks ago, um, I got the idea to take the, some of the stories that I wrote, that I publish on my website, um, angelapoint.com, and it should be in um, the description or um, wherever, it, you know. Um, it, there's a link to my Facebook, and I'll, I'll leave a link in the description um, when I move it over. Uh, when I post this on YouTube, um, and I'll try to figure out a way to get the poll on YouTube too. But, um, anyway, so yeah, so I've got a bunch of stories that are, that you can go ahead and read for free on, um, angelapoint.com. And, uh, I decided that I'm going to uh, read some of them on the stream, kind of read them aloud on a video and I'm doing it via live stream because I don't like editing videos afterwards. So I'm just going to read it, read it on the stream. Um, Dahlia's flowers is the one I'm going to start with today. Uh, it's one of my mom's favorites. It is uh, a standalone short story. So I can read the whole thing in this, but for some of my other stories that are a little bit longer, um, excuse me, or, um, I meant to refill my water, but I didn't. Um, for some of the stories that are a little bit longer or um, multiple parts, then I'm only going to read for about half an hour if it'll take that long. Or, you know, depending. I'll, I'll, I'm only going to read them in segments and then um, um, so the videos will be in multiple parts. But uh, for those of you that are watching that's not live, I will leave or I'll, I'll put a timestamp on when I actually start reading so that you can skip all of this stuff at the beginning if you want, the, the intro and all that. But um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, and I want to leave some time afterwards after I'm done reading for kind of uh, a little mini Q&A. Can't be too long on the Q&A, but you know, any kind of questions or let me know what you think. I really, 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 really like feedback. So, uh, I won't always be able to read the comments as I'm reading. Um, you can still, still, still write them, please write, uh, write the comments while I'm, uh, reading aloud. But, um, 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 um but I may not get to them like in time. So, um, okay. So that's, that's, that's about it. Um, and I've got the story on my phone. So I can read, um, and I really do recommend uh, going on the website and reading them. So if you really like the stories, or if you if you like the story, uh, then go to my website angelapoint.com and find the story. You can read along with me if you want, uh, but you can interact, leave comments on the story itself on the website, and please, please, please share. Uh, the stories from the website itself. You can share them from Facebook, and I really, really want you to share the video. You know, that'll be great too. But 
uh, if you share the stories from the website, it really, really helps me out. So I'm going to read the little intro. This, um, so I'm, I'm Angel LaPointe, and I did write the story, so this is my story. Uh, the, the little intro, the, the description of the story. Um, the oak tree outside Dahlia's window is special. It produces a single flower just for her every morning and never gives her the same flower twice. What Dahlia doesn't know is that the flowers are from Florin, the oak man that resides in her tree. Florin loves Dahlia, but fairy law prevents him from ever letting her know that he exists. Are daily flowers enough to sustain his affection, or will he risk breaking the rules to be with the one he loves? So that's, that's the description of the story that I'm reading today. And um, if you go on the website and look up this story in particular, some of my stories have some artwork. Uh, I commission artists because I'm not an artist. Um, I've commissioned some artists to kind of make some cover art for some of these stories. And this one, um, this one does have a really, really beautiful picture uh, by Kefrano K that I, I commissioned them to draw this picture for me. And it's a picture of Dahlia sitting in her window with Florin in his tree watching. So um, it, I, I, you'll have to go, if you want to see it, you'll have to go to the website and look at it. But, um, so I really recommend doing that. Okay, so now at seven minutes into the video, I'm gonna start reading. It was an aster this time, bright, purple, and completely out of place on the branch of the oak tree outside Dahlia's window. She opened the window and carefully plucked the flower from the branch, adding it to the vase filled with the many other out-of-place flowers Dahlia had seen growing from her tree. The first time it happened, Dahlia thought it was a mistake. There was no way that a buttercup could grow from an oak tree. She snapped a picture of it and went to tell her mother. Her mother looked at the picture, didn't believe it was really growing from the tree, and when Dahlia finally convinced her mother to come upstairs to see for herself, the flower was gone. The branch remained bare for a couple of weeks after that. However, one day Dahlia woke up to find an orchid growing from the branch. She started to call for her mother again, but the orchid began to wither before she could say anything. Eventually, Dahlia found that the flowers never lasted long enough for her to show anyone else. They were her flowers, her own little oddity. She began to pick them and keep them in a vase in her room. The flowers grew daily after that. They only grew on the one branch, the one close to her window. The rest of the tree behaved just like an oak tree should. Its leaves changed colors with the seasons, and it produced large acorns that littered Dahlia's backyard. Its branches were thick and strong. Dahlia's younger brothers loved to climb up into the tree, racing each other to see who could climb the fastest. It slipped once, and Dahlia couldn't learn that the tree was to catch him. But when she thought about it later, she laughed at herself for being silly. Florin winced as Dahlia plucked the aster from his branch. It only hurt for a second, like pulling out a hair, but the smile on Dahlia's face as she brought the flower close in order to smell it made it all worth it. Florin would give Dahlia a hundred flowers, a million, as long as he could see her smile like that. Dahlia was the most beautiful person Florin had ever seen. He wished that he could talk to her, to tell her that he was growing these flowers just for her. But she was mortal, and Faye were not allowed to reveal themselves to mortals, not without the permission of the queen. So Florin had to settle for giving her a flower every morning and simply imagine what would happen if he were able to speak to her. Florin thought back to the first time he saw Dahlia. She and her family had moved into the house next to Florin's tree just over a year ago. As soon as he saw her, Florin fell in love with her. She resembled a maple tree, 
with her thick hair and dark skin. When she laughed, it was the sound of bird song, clear and melodic. She arrived with her family, her parents and two younger brothers, Marcus and Henry. While Dahlia and her parents unloaded the boxes off the truck and carried them into the house, the two boys went into the back and climbed up Florin's tree. He laughed as he watched the boys climb and play in his branches. It had been too long since kids had climbed his tree. He was glad that they were there. He was even more glad when Dahlia picked the bedroom closest to his tree, the one with the window that he could reach. As much as he loved watching over the old couple that had lived in the house before, he loved watching Dahlia and her family living there even more. So, did your magic tree give you another flower today? Asked Elsie as Dahlia put her till into the register next to hers. It's not magic, said Dahlia. Really? What would you call an oak tree that grows a different kind of flower each day? Asked Elsie. Strange? Odd? A miracle? Said Dahlia. There are lots of other explanations besides just magic. Just because something is different doesn't mean it's magic. Dahlia held up her left hand, which had an extra finger on the other side of her pinky. <sighs> Polydactyly is different than your tree, said Elsie. There are lots of people with extra fingers and toes. As far as I know, there has never been a tree that grows flowers other than the ones it is supposed to. Right. As far as you know, said Dahlia. We don't know that my tree is the first. Have you tried calling someone and telling them about your tree? Asked Elsie. No, exclaimed Dahlia. I, I, I mean, there's not really any point in calling anyone about it. I have no proof. The flowers only bloom in the morning and wither in minutes. And if I try to show anyone else, or even take pictures, then the flowers won't bloom for days. And you still want to say that it's not magic? asked Elsie. What's not magic? asked Chloe, the head cashier. Nothing, said Dahlia, shooting Elsie a look. Elsie is just talking nonsense again. Elsie ignored the look and Dahlia. Doll has a magic tree that blooms a different flower every day, but just for her, she said. Elsie! exclaimed Dahlia. A magic tree? asked Chloe. She leaned on Dahlia's counter. Tell me more about it. There's a customer coming, said Dahlia, nodding to the man walking down the aisle with a shopping cart full of items. I'll take him, Elsie offered, helpfully waving the man to her counter. Elsie's got him, Chloe repeated. Tell me about your magic tree. Dahlia sighed and glared at Elsie. It's not magic, she said. It's just special. It's an oak tree, but it can bloom different kinds of flowers. Only on one branch, though, and I seem to be the only one who can see the flowers. What do you mean, different kinds of flowers? asked Chloe. The first one I ever saw was a buttercup, said Dahlia. But it's grown all kinds since then. Snapdragons, carnations, violets, tulips. This morning it was an aster. And you're the only one who can see them? asked Chloe. Why? I don't know, said Dahlia. Anytime I try to show someone, the flowers stop for a few days. It's almost like the tree is upset that I tried to show anyone. Dahlia paused as she realized what she had just said, which is ridiculous. Trees don't have emotions. Forget I said anything. You don't know that, said Chloe. Maybe trees do have emotions. How would humans know any differently? Because of science, suggested Dahlia. I think if trees could feel things, the scientists would have told us by now and we would stop cutting them down. I disagree, said Chloe. Money is the most important things to some people. Professionals who claim to want to help, whether it's people or nature, really only want to make more money and lie to make that happen, but that's a topic for another time. You have a customer coming, so I'll let you get back to work. Chloe walked back to her counter to check some papers, leaving Dahlia to check out the next person in line. Dahlia looked exhausted when she got back from work that night, thought Florin, more so than usual. She was still beautiful, though. She was always beautiful. Even though he had limited her himself to giving her only one flower a day, something inside told him that she could use another one tonight.
Florin closed his eyes and concentrated on the branch outside Dolly. He opened his eyes when he felt it bloom, but Dolly went back to the window. Florin gently tapped the window with the tip of his branch, trying his best to make it seem like the wind was moving it. Dahlia turned, and the smile on her face at seeing the moonflower made Florin's heart flutter. He wished that he could reveal himself to her, to let her know that he existed. Florin knew he wouldn't just sh What did he even say? Hello, I'm the tree that's been leaving you flowers every day since you moved in. I know you don't believe in magic, but it's real and so am I. No, oh, that wouldn't work. Florin sighed. <sighs> Love was unfair. It sucks, doesn't it, not being able to tell her? Florin jerked at the sound of a voice from beneath him. He nearly lost his balance. When he looked down, he could see a summer nymph standing at the base of his tree. Hi, my name's Chloe, said the nymph. I'm a friend of Dahlia's. Can I come up? You're a friend of Dahlia? asked Florin. Chloe nodded and Florin motioned for her to climb up, moving over on his branch to make room for her. Chloe flashed Florin a smile before jumping up to the nearest branch and gracefully making her way up to Florin's branch. My name is Florin, said Florin. What do you mean you're a friend of Dahlia? Fairies aren't supposed to talk to mortals. I'm a halfling, said Chloe. My dad is mortal, so I'm allowed to go between both worlds. I'm just not allowed to tell the mortals that I'm half fairy. But you know Dahlia, asked Florin. Chloe nodded. I work with her. We're not extremely close, but we are friends. Florin glanced at Dahlia's window, where she was sitting at her computer. So how did you find out about me, he asked. She was talking about a magic oak tree that grows all kinds of flowers, said Chloe. To a mortal, or on her point of view, but to another fairy, it's easy to figure out the truth, Florin finished. Am I in trouble? I'm not technically breaking the rules. I'm not talking to her or letting, letting her know that I exist in any way. I'm just giving her flowers. What's wrong with that? In my opinion, nothing, said Chloe. I think it's sweet. The queen may think differently, though. Florin looked down. Hey, I'm not going to tell the queen, Chloe promised. My mom and I are solitary fae, completely unaccountable to the queen. Lucky you, muttered Florin. I'm not solitary. I am loyal to the queen. I still have to answer to her. Which is why I am going to help you, said Chloe. Florin looked up, hopefully. How? Well, since you clearly aren't comfortable bending the rules by talking to her while wearing glamour, Chloe paused and looked to Florin for confirmation about her assumption. When he shook his head, she continued. Then here's what we're going to do. You can write her letters, anonymous letters, like from a secret admirer, and give them to me. I will make sure that they wind up in places that Dahlia will find them. What do you think? She still won't know that they're from me, said Florin. Well, you could sign them, said Chloe, but that would be breaking, breaking the rules. Or you could petition to become a solitary fairy, but that might take too long. Besides, if I become a solitary, then the queen may make me leave her territory, added Florin, which is something I cannot physically do without bringing my tree with me, and something that I can't emotionally do because it would mean leaving Dahlia, which would defeat the whole purpose. Just about any way of telling her that you exist would be breaking the rules, said Chloe. You've spent the last several months giving her flowers. This way, you'll actually be able to talk to her. We can keep thinking of a way for you to be able to actually talk to her, but in the meantime, let me be the go-between. You won't get in trouble, I'll be the one giving her the letters. Florin smiled. Thank you, Chloe. Dear Dahlia, 
I've wanted to talk to you for a long time, but circumstances have prevented it. I still can't tell you who I am, or even why I can't tell you. I could get in trouble just for writing this, but I can't take it anymore. I had to talk to you, somehow, even though I know you can't respond. I won't say too much right now, because I don't want to overwhelm you. Just know that there is someone out there who thinks about you. Your secret admirer. Wow! First a magic tree gives you flowers, and now you have a secret admirer? exclaimed Elsie, reading over the letter again. Lucky! Why does everything cool happen to you? Dahlia blushed. I don't know. This was just in my mailbox when I checked the mail this morning. I'm so jealous, said Elsie. I wonder what he's like. He says he'll get in trouble for talking to you. Is he some kind of secret agent working undercover? What if he's, like, a superhero? I don't think it's anything like that, said Dahlia. He's probably just shy or something. Shy people don't get in trouble for talking to other people, said Elsie. He's so mysterious. Maybe he's in the witness protection program or something. What are you two talking about now? asked Chloe, coming up to them. Dahlia took the letter from Elsie and handed it to Chloe. This was in my mailbox this morning, she said. Dahlia has a secret admirer, exclaimed Elsie. Really? Chloe tried to sound surprised and interested, but was not convincing. Chloe, do you know something about this? asked Dahlia. What? I... No! How, how could I... Chloe stammered. You do know something, said Elsie. Okay, spill. What do you know? Chloe, if you know something, please tell me, said Dahlia. I can really only handle one mystery at a time, and this tree thing isn't like involved anytime soon. Chloe looked from Elsie to Dahlia. She was never very good at lying, perhaps stemming from the fact that fairies couldn't lie. So she knew that if she tried to deny it, they would know. She and Florin had decided to wait a couple of weeks after their initial conversation so that Dahlia wouldn't connect the notes to the flower on her tree. Fine, said Chloe. I have a friend who likes you, but he's not allowed to say anything to you directly, and I can't tell you why. He wanted me to help him talk to you, and I suggested anonymous notes. It was true enough. Chloe just hoped that they wouldn't push the matter. Why can't you tell us? asked Elsie. And why can't he talk to her himself? He'll get in trouble, said Chloe. Please, I really can't say any more than that. You were never supposed to know that I was involved in the first place. Elsie opened her mouth as if to ask another question, but Dahlia cut her off. So, if I wrote a response, you could get it to him? asked Dahlia. The question surprised Chloe. The thought had never occurred to her. Yeah, said Chloe. I can do that, just as long as you don't ask him any questions that could get him in trouble. Dahlia grinned from ear to ear and threw her arms around Chloe. Thank you, she said. Dear mystery admirer, I know you weren't expecting a response, but you're getting one anyway. Chloe isn't a very good actress, and I knew she was involved in some way almost immediately. Don't worry, I won't ask her about you. You've both explained how you could get in trouble for talking to me, and I don't want that to happen. I just wanted to let you know that I got your letter. I know you can't tell me much about yourself, but I would like to know what you can tell me. You clearly know about me, but you are a complete stranger to me. I'll avoid personal or identifying questions and start with some basics. How are you doing today? Do you have a favorite animal? Color? Pets? I want to ask if you have any siblings, but that may be too personal. Feel free not to answer that one. Dahlia. Florin was surprised and slightly concerned when Chloe showed up at his tree with a response letter from Dahlia. What's this? he asked. You told her? I'm going to get into so much trouble. Relax, said Chloe. She doesn't know that it's from you. She knew something was up and asked me directly. I just said that a friend of mine had a crush on her. Elsie's convinced that you're some sort of secret agent and is trying to convince Dahlia of the same thing. 
no matter what their imaginations tell them, I can practically guarantee that fairy is not among the choices. Florin relaxed. You're probably right, he said. And look on the bright side, continued Chloe. Now you can talk to her, and she can talk back, all without her ever seeing your face. That's not ideal, said Florin, but it's better than me having a one-sided conversation with her. If the queen finds out, though, she won't, Chloe assured him. The only ones who know are you and me, and neither of us are going to tell her. Chloe smiled at Florin and put an arm around his shoulder. Everything's going to be fine, she said. Trust me. For the next several weeks, Florin and Dahlia would write each other letters, give them to Chloe, and wait for the response. Florin was thrilled to finally be able to talk to Dahlia, and he loved seeing her reactions as she read his letters. Of course, he never stopped giving her flowers every day. That was a different kind of special. Even though Dahlia had never seen her mysterious admirer and did not even know his name, she felt her heart flutter every time Chloe handed her a new letter. She tried not to speculate too much about who he really was and why he would get in trouble if he got caught talking to her. If she built him up too much in her mind, she thought, then there was a chance that she would be disappointed by the real thing if they ever got the chance to meet. I think I'm falling in love with him, Dahlia told Chloe and Elsie at work one day. Good, said Chloe. He's in love with you, too. No, said Dahlia. Not good. I can't be in love with someone who can't even tell me his name. What kind of relationship is that? I know I promised and I wouldn't ask about him, but you have to tell me something. I want to meet him, Chloe. Chloe chewed on her bottom lip. I'll talk to him, she promised. See what I can do. Thank you, sighed Dahlia. While you're at it, can you find me a mysterious secret boyfriend too? Asked Elsie. What do you mean she wants to meet me? Asked Florin. I mean just what I said, said Chloe. She said that she's falling in love with you through your letters, but can't stand the fact that she knows really nothing about you. She's watching you through a sheet of paper and imagining what it would be like to actually talk to you. Sound familiar? But I can't actually talk to her, said Florin. The queen... Oh, forget the queen, exclaimed Chloe. There was a girl out there who is in love with you, Florin. Do you know how many fairies have broken the rules against talking to mortals for the sake of love? Lots. Lots. Just... Put on some glamour and come to the store with me. I can't, said Florin. As much as I want to, and I really want to, I'm more afraid of the queen. Florin! Chloe, please, begged Florin. Drop it. It's hard enough to say no. Besides, there's a chance the queen could punish Dahlia for me going to talk to her. That would be worse. So, please, stop asking. <sighs> Chloe sighed. What am I going to tell Dahlia tomorrow? I don't know, admitted Florin. But you'll think of something. You can lie. I can't. I'll just tell her that your superior won't allow it, said Chloe. She won't like it, though. I don't like it either said Florin. Dahlia was disappointed, but understanding. Things went back to mostly normal after that. Dahlia, in an, in an attempt to stop herself from falling even more in love with Florin, who she now believed she would never meet, started writing more formal letters and signing them with your friend instead of just her name. Florin noticed the shift in Dahlia's letters and his heart broke. Unknown to anyone, even Chloe, Florin had actually sent in several letters to the Queen detailing his situation and asking for permission to speak to Dahlia. He sent in the first letter shortly after Dahlia and her family moved in and had sent a new letter each week. 
He had yet to hear back and did not want to get his hopes up, which is why he never said anything to Chloe. At the shift in tone with Dahlia's letters, Florin was, attempted to t was tempted to tell Dahlia, but did not want to give her a false hope. Maybe things would be better if he just let her feelings fizzle out, go back to the way things were. A few weeks later, someone moved into the previously vacant property beside Dahlia's house. This new neighbor did not like the fact that one of Florin's branches hung over into his property and wanted to cut it off. Dahlia's parents were unhappy about this because they did not want anything to mar the beauty of the tree. Dahlia was upset because she was afraid that cutting off the branch might have an effect on whatever was causing it to produce her flowers. Florin was devastated at the thought of losing a piece of himself and tried to move that branch away without alerting the mortals, but that method was much too slow. When Chloe heard about the man wanting to cut off one of Florin's branches, she was horrified and hurried over to Dahlia's house. She arrived to see the neighbor holding a chainsaw and setting up a ladder. Stop, she cried. Please wait. What now, growled the neighbor. Chloe, asked Dahlia, surprised. What are you doing here? You can't cut a single branch off this tree, said Chloe. And why not, asked the man. It's over my property. I've already checked with the city, and they say this tree isn't old enough to be protected. I am well within my rights to cut off the part that is over my property. So please, I'm just dying to hear the reason for why I... I'm just dying to hear your reason for why I can't cut down this tree. Well, that's because, um, Chloe's mind raced to find an excuse. She glanced up and saw Florin in his tree looking down at her. She looked back to the neighbor. I will be more than happy to tell you why you can't cut off that branch, but I need to talk to Dahlia first. Chloe grabbed Dahlia's arm and started for the house. Chloe, wait, said Dahlia as she was dragged. What is going on? Is this about the flowers? Yes, exclaimed Chloe. And no. I'll tell you more when we get upstairs. Flowers? asked the neighbor. The back door closed on Dahlia's parents trying to explain Dahlia's mysterious flowers to the neighbor. Good, sighed Chloe. That should buy us some time. She pulled Dahlia upstairs to Dahlia's room and closed the door. Now will you tell me what's going on? asked Dahlia, rubbing her arm. Chloe opened the window before answering. That tree is not a regular tree, said Chloe. What are you doing? Florin asked Chloe. What do you mean? asked Dahlia. There's someone living in it, said Chloe. Chloe, stop, begged Florin. The neighbor just wants to cut off one branch, said Dahlia. I don't like it, but it's hardly going to affect the birds and squirrels. I don't mean the birds and squirrels, said Chloe. I mean Florin. Chloe? Who? Florin, continued Chloe, ignoring Florin. He's the fairy that lives in that tree. He's the one who's been leaving you flowers every day, and he's your mysterious admirer. Chloe, stop talking, please, exclaimed Florin. Fairy, said Dahlia. Chloe, this is no time for joking. I thought... It's not a joke, said Chloe. Fairies are real. I know because I am one. Well, half one anyway. Chloe dropped her glamour as she turned towards the window, not waiting to see Dahlia's reaction. Come on, Florin, said Chloe. This is an emergency. If you don't prove to Dahlia that you exist, then she can't cut then she can't help us come up with a way to save your branch. You're a... Dahlia stammered, looking at Chloe. Y you have... You're not... Unable to finish a complete sentence, Dahlia turned towards the window, scanning the empty branch. F Florin? said Dahlia. Are you there? Are you real? Chloe gave Florin one more pleading glance. Finally, Florin gave in. <sighs> he walked across his branch and into Dahlia's room, becoming visible as soon as he was out of view of the mortals in the backyard below. 
Yes, he said, speaking to Dahlia for the first time. I'm real, and I have always been here. I think I need to sit down, said Dahlia. But instead of sitting, she ran up to Florin and wrapped her arms around him. Florin was surprised, but instinctively returned her embrace, the way he had been dreaming of doing since he first saw her. Okay, I wasn't expecting that reaction, said Chloe. I always had a feeling that there was someone watching over me, said Dahlia, that my tree was special. You are my tree, aren't you? Florin nodded. I'm what's known as an oak man, he said, the spirit of that particular tree. Basically, he's a male wood nymph, explained Chloe. I'm a summer nymph, in case you were wondering. We couldn't tell you because the queen forbids fairies from talking to mortals, explained Florin. You have no idea how much it hurt me to see you every day and have you look straight through me. Dahlia laughed, and when she pulled away, there were tears in her eyes. <laughs> I don't know if I'm dreaming or if I'm going crazy or what, she said. It, it doesn't feel like that, though. It feels real. You feel real. I am real, Florin repeated. And if we don't find some excuse for your neighbor, then he's going to... Chloe's words were cut off by the sound of the chainsaw powering up, followed immediately by the sound of cutting wood and a scream of excruciating pain from Florin. Chloe rushed to the still open window as Florin doubled over, arms wrapping around himself. Stop! Chloe shouted to the people on the ground below. Dahlia's parents were no longer in the backyard, and the neighbor couldn't hear anything over the sound of the chainsaw and the ear-protecting prote headphones he was wearing. It wasn't until he had finished cutting off the branch and taken off the headphones that he heard Chloe yelling at him. He called Chloe a rude name before going back into his own home. <clears throat> Florin could feel arms around him and knew that Dahlia was trying to comfort him but the pain was too much. He hardly noticed when Dahlia's parents came into the room. Florin could feel himself fading, his vision going black. The darkness promised relief from the pain, and Florin welcomed it. Just before he fell into unconsciousness, he felt another presence enter the room, a stronger presence. Dahlia sat beside Florin, holding his hand. It had been a full day since her neighbor cut off Florin's branch, and he still hadn't woken up. He would, though. The fairy healer who was tending to Florin promised Dahlia that he would wake up. Dahlia hardly paid any attention to the fact that she was currently sitting in the realm of fairy itself. She was too concerned about Florin. A soft sound came from Florin, and his eyes fluttered open. D Dahlia? Is this a dream? Where am I? Dahlia laughed in relief when Florin spoke. <laughs> You're not dreaming, she told him. You're safe. You're at a healer's. And you're going to be okay, said the healer, standing, be standing behind Dahlia. Do you remember what happened? Florin nodded. That mortal cut off one of my branches, he said. I can feel its absence. I don't remember what happened when the pain started, though. Why is Dahlia here? <sighs> my parents heard you screaming, Dahlia explained. They ran up to my room to see what was going on. A few seconds after that, another fairy showed up. Chloe explained to him what had happened, and he started to take you away. He wanted me to stay at home, but I told him I was not leaving you alone. <laughs> she said that to a royal messenger said Chloe, coming into, view, coming into the room. It was a brave move. I thought he was going to hurt her, but he just nodded and brought her along. A royal messenger came? asked Florin. Why did a royal messenger come? Did the queen find out that quickly? He left this just a few hours ago, said the healer, handing Florin a letter with the queen's seal. Chloe and Dahlia helped Florin sit up 
and he took the letter with shaking hands. He broke the seal and read the contents. As he read, a smile grew on his face. She got my letters, he said. The royal messenger had come to tell me that the queen had received every letter I sent her, asking her to bend the rules so that I could talk to Dahlia. And to tell me not to send any more. But when he actually met Dahlia, he told the queen about her, and she changed her mind. You were sending letters to the queen this whole time? And never told me? Asked Chloe. Mm. Let me redo that line. Hold on. You were sending letters to the queen this whole time and never told me? Asked Chloe. So, what does this mean? Asked Dahlia. It means, Florin took Dahlia's hands in hers, that we can be together. She won't punish either of us for me breaking the rules and revealing myself to you. She even included your parents in her pardon. What about Chloe? asked Dahlia. I'm solitary, said Chloe. I'm not under her rules. So, no more letters? asked Dahlia. No more imagining? No more dreaming? Nope, Florin smiled. Now, we can have the real thing. Chloe noticed the way Florin and Dahlia were leaning towards each other and backed out of the room, pulling the healer with her. Come on, Doc, said Chloe. Let's let the lovebirds have some privacy. I love you, Dahlia, said Florin. I love you too, Florin, said Dahlia. They closed the space between them and shared their first of many kisses. So, that was Dahlia's flowers. And I see Emily just showed up right at the end of the story. You can watch, uh, rewind or watch it from the beginning. But um, her phone messed up, so that's okay. It happens. But um, anyway, yeah. So that was Dahlia's flowers. There is a poll in the video um, uh, asking which story you want me to read next. Uh, I put the choices between The Mastermind, which is one of my favorite stories, um, and I will actually, I'll, if you'll give me a second, I will read the uh, descriptions. I'll read the descriptions of both of these, and you can tell me uh, which ones you want to. It'll, it'll help help with the voting. Um, don't tell me the posts are coming soon. They're there. I know they are. Okay, The Mastermind is in three parts. I wrote it in three parts. That's not saying it'll be three videos. It, like, they're, <laughs> they're kind of long, so um, it would probably be, like, multiple videos. I, I may have, like, two videos per story, so it may end up being, like, six videos. But, um, okay. But, anyway, The Mastermind is one of my favorite stories. And I'm actually um, building an entire world around this story. So, um, okay. The description of the mastermind. I hated him as much as I loved him. Damien Frey seems like the perfect man. He was rich, kind, generous, and a scientist with a genius level IQ. When he showed up in ballerina Catherine Hart's life, she could hardly believe it. It was like a dream come true until she discovered that Damien was not what he claimed to be. All of a sudden, her dream became a nightmare. So that one's kind of like a superhero kind of story or super villain story because the mastermind is the villain. Um, so anyway, but I, am, I have a whole bunch of uh, other stories in the works that it revolve around this world, this universe. It's te technically a multiverse, but, um, you know, but center around the characters in this. And most of the actual books kind of lead up to what happens in this story, but the story is kind of the introduction to everything. So it's one of my favorite stories that I've written. I love it. It's, it's really dark. 
but <clears throat> it is one of my favorites. And um, so that's that's option number one. Option number two is Crystal Horizon. And for those um, for those of uh, my coworkers, they know the story. Um, the the main characters in in the story Crystal Horizon, with the exception of Kiara and Ian, and Kiara is the main character who is the narrator, the protagonist of the story, and Ian is her husband. Um, Kiara is based off me. Ian is ma made up entirely, but all of the other main characters of that are based off of my coworkers. So they they know that one. They will. They like that one. Okay, but the description of Crystal Horizon and it's uh, two parts but they're not nearly as long as some of the other stories. So I may actually get to do it in two videos. We'll see. Um, excuse me. In one world, Kiara is just an ordinary retail employee. In another, she is the medic on the starship Crystal Horizon with a mission to discover a cure for the deadly Kilex, a disease affecting thousands in the Graxian Alliance. When Kiara falls asleep on one world, she wakes in the other. But even though her friends and co-workers appear in both worlds, Kiara is the only one who remembers. Which world is real? Which is the dream? Or are they both just figments of Kiara's imagination? So those are the, cho the, the choices. Um, on the Facebook, there's the, the poll on Facebook Live. Um, I'm going to try to figure it out on YouTube. Uh, how to do it on YouTube and um, whichever one has the highest votes off of both Facebook and YouTube. Um, that's the one I'll read next, but um, whichever story doesn't get picked this time, will be included in the poll for the next poll that I do for the next time. So like if, if people vote for the mastermind, then once I finish reading the mastermind, when I post, when I read the last part of the mastermind, I'll post another poll and it'll have crystal horizon or another book or crystal horizon and another book in the poll. So, um, make your choice. Um, there. And, Leave comments. Let me know what you thought of Dahlia's flowers, uh, who the who your favorite characters were, what you thought about the characters. I'm really particular about my characters, so one of the things that I really really love for people to do is make a list of the characters and tell me exactly what you think of each character. So what did you think about Florin? What did you like about him? What did you not like about him? What did you think of Dahlia? What did you like about her? What did you not like about her? Etc. Et um, through all the characters, I know Elsie was kind of a filler character. She's got a whole backstory in my head, and uh, just um, she did. She she does end up getting a boyfriend. She she finds a, a human boyfriend. He uh, a customer that goes through her line at the store. So that just never got in the story, but in my mind, she does end up living happily ever after too. So <laughs> just to to set your mind at ease, there, Elsie does have a happy ending, but. Um, I guess that's it. And in the description, I will mark where the story, the actual reading of the story begins so that you can skip through all the intro if you want. Next time, I will be reading either The Mastermind or Crystal Horizon. That's up to you guys. And uh, that's it for this one. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!